I have been meaning to make this video for a very, very long time, but there's always been something interrupting it. Last time it was Summit, this time maybe it's Summit again, or maybe I actually managed to get it out this time. Regardless, hello there, I'm Pipsqueak, and today I want to talk about tech chasing. More specifically, I want to talk about reaction tech chasing, a technique that I think is criminally underutilized at every level of play, uh, largely because of how daunting it is to learn and how little is known about it, how much misinformation there is about it. So, I wanted to make this video to hopefully clear some of it up and go into the details of how I learned it and what advice I have for other people looking to learn it. Let's start by dissecting one of the most common misconceptions people have about tech chasing. And for the record, I will be just referring to it as tech chasing for the rest of the video because I cannot be asked to shorten it to RTC or say reaction tech chasing every time. But I digress. What is the misconception? Well, it's that reaction tech chasing exists at the edge of human reaction times, which is so far from the truth that it actually makes me laugh. Reaction tech chasing, purely looking at the frame data, is fairly lenient. I, am, I have almost no doubts that everyone watching this video has the human reaction times in order to reaction tech chase consistently. The problem comes from all the factors around that, not necessarily the tech chase itself. The first problem might sound extremely obvious, but it's the one that most people fail on. And that is that in order to react to something, you also have to know what it is you're reacting to. And what do I mean by this? Well, what I mean is that you cannot reaction tech chase most characters by the moving away from the spot where they landed. You will never be able to catch roles, and if you're also trying to differentiate the tech in place from the roles by seeing if they've moved or not, then it'll be too late and you will fail. And this is what most people do when they start out reaction tech chasing. Now, the first problem is what I consider the great filter to tech chasing. It's where most people give up because they haven't looked up the animations and they don't know what they're looking at. So they load up Uncle Punch, they load up 20XX, they try and reaction tech chase and they fail. And after doing that for long enough, they get discouraged and they stop trying. If the first problem is the bane of those who are seriously tryharding, the technique, tryharding the learning process, uh, then the second problem is the bane of those who just dabble in it. If you're dabbling in just tech chasing every now and then, and you're not trying to make it into a science, be the next Wizrobe, then I almost guarantee that you are struggling because of this single problem. And it's also another obvious one. However, I can sort of get why it's a problem. What am I talking about? I'm talking about positioning. When I look at most top players who don't fully commit to tech chasing, uh, what they do wrong is that they will hit the opponent and then they will wait and then they will move. That is not how you do it. You cannot wait to see where your opponent is going to land before you start moving. What you have to do is you have to recognize that you're going to get the hit and then you have to move preemptively. You can react in microspace during the movement. Say I hit a fox nair on someone at 50%, they will fly away. If I wait until the hit stun ends before I try to react, I will be too late. I will waste 15, 16 frames before I start moving. If I dash preemptively and react during the movement, I will be able to get to the position I can microspace with a wave dash or a running crouch, whatever is needed during the movement, make sure I get it correct, and I will be able to be right next to them. There's nothing else I have to focus on except the reaction. Meanwhile, if I don't do that, they will be able to start rolling by the time I get there. You might even get getup attacked running into them. This happens all the time, and it's infuriating to see that a lot of players who could reaction tech chase just never try because they keep getting get up attacked or they keep being too late on setting it up and then they discount it. Whereas if you look at Wistrobe or you look at me or you look at any competent tech chaser, you'll see that the instant we get a hit, we are dashing there, we are wave dashing there, we're doing whatever is needed to follow up just like if it was a regular combo. Like you don't look at top players and see them hit, wait, move, hit, wait, move. You see them hit, you see them move, you see them combo. 
That's just how the game works, and it's the same thing for tech chasing. And the third and final problem is, of course, tournament nerves. And I can understand why people would discount tech chasing as this extremely hard thing if they see even the best player mess it up in tournament. However, I believe that tech chasing on average will give you a better reward than reading in like every situation except the super spaghetti endgame sets. And you need to have a backup in those scenarios, I'm not discounting that. However, ignoring the technique entirely because it's inconsistent during stressful situations seems like a bit of a bad decision in my head, because if you can reaction tech chase from the start of the set and just make sure that it's not even close, then you won't end up in those super stressful situations anyways. And even if you are getting there, in most sets I'm sure that you can look at the success rate of someone like Wizrobe and you can just compare that to rolling the dice on a, uh, a read and you can make the distinction that, okay, he reads it one out of three times, gets the kill one out of three times, he reaction tech chases, he gets it one out of two times. You know, it's just more consistent once you get super good at it. The one thing I can understand is saying that the time required to learn it is too much of an investment and you'd rather learn other techniques, which I can definitely see the merit of, but I've definitely benefited enough to the point that I can just beat 99% of players in my region with just my bread and butter punish game tech chasing that I think it's so much stronger than most of the other options and it scales so well right because if you learn tech chasing then that is a technique that'll just be better and better the better you get at the game right it won't ever there's no counterplay at top level it won't be like if you learn a cheesy strategy not that cheese is like a well-defined term but it's not like you're gonna learn a cheesy strategy and then at top level you find out that oh everyone just knows how to avoid this with tech chasing it just means that you unlock more of your kit for Fox, I can hit a Nair at 50% and get a grab. It's as if I hit a down air without a lot of the, of the counterplay that down hair has. Uh, and for other characters, it might be even more absurd. You hit a Nair with Marth, that's a grab. You hit a Nair with Falcon, that's a grab. Uh, you know, there's a ton of situations where getting a follow-up is just borderline impossible without tech chasing, which is also one of the strengths that people don't talk about. You don't necessarily have to be Wisrobe in order to make tech chasing good. As long as you can get the one tech chase on the one knockdown from an aerial, most characters can convert that into their far easier and equally strong combo from grab. Like, if you hit a Nair into grab as Marth, you get the grab follow-up. You don't have to tech chase anymore if you don't want to. Same with Falcon, you know, like... These strengths are so hard for me to discount, and I hate when people boil it down to, you know, Ah, oh, it's Sheik down throwing over and over, and it's Falcon down throwing over and over. Because the technique's biggest strength is just that it allows you to use a ton of aerials that you otherwise wouldn't be able to use because their risk versus reward is so bad. If I hit a Nair at 50% and I'm not reaction tech chasing as Fox, I get nothing. Of course I'd much rather use down air or finding a raw, uh, raw grab, but... I don't have to, I can just reaction tech chase, which means suddenly my moves have a far better risk versus reward than my opponent who doesn't implement this technique. Okay, uh, enough stalling. Let's get into the guide portion of this video, aka the actually important part. So what is reaction tech chasing? Well, it boils down to abusing a design decision where they manage to make the tech options have such bad frame data that most characters can punish them on reaction consistently. Uh, there's one exception to this where no character that I know of can punish Sheik's tech options because she has two animations that look borderline identical up until frame 7. But outside of that, reaction tech chasing is just a product of the low input lag of melee and the long frame data, the slow frame data of all the tech options. Now most characters abuse this with grab, because grab is a almost universally frame 7 move that is also often the character's strongest combo option, and it's also one of the few ways to consistently beat shield, which is what most people will do automatically if you're too late on the tech chase. 
Not every character is born so fortunate though. Some characters have slower grabs and some characters straight up can't take chase at all. Uh, Bowser would be an example, that character can barely cover a single option very well. And uh, Samus, for example, famously has a very bad grab. However, she compensates by having both a good dash attack, a good down tilt and a good down smash. So a lot of the time characters have alternatives. There's also a few top tiers who don't have amazing tech chase options, namely Peach and Falco. And Falco specifically is really funny to me because if Falco could tech chase consistently with like Shine or Grab, I think he'd be by far the best character in the game. It's one of the few things holding him back. And in the same way, one of the reasons Peach isn't as scary as new players are led to believe is that a lot of the time you can ASDI down tech away and she'll be too slow to punish you uh, with anything meaningful. Like even if she hits a dash attack, it'll be the weak hit and you'll go to ledge. So those two characters struggle with this a lot more than everyone else. But even them have good tech chase setups that are so important to know. For example, Peach can react and tech chase everything on platforms with grab, uh, and Falco can, in the corner, cover everything with F smash and shine, and if they can't go the entire roll distance, they both can just cover every option. So, situationally, it's still extremely important to know for these characters at a top level. But I can still see an argument for why you wouldn't want to prioritize learning it, unlike some other characters like Sheik and Falcon, who basically depend on it. I think it's about time that we go into the frame data of the various options. And thankfully, Nintendo was kind enough to design it to be almost universally consistent. For example, every character has a 30 frame total regular getup, a 49 frame getup attack, a 40 frame tech roll, and a 35 frame getup roll, which is just, you know, missing the tech and then rolling. An important note there is that that means that it's harder to tech chase a miss tech in general than it is to tech chase the techs. Obviously though, if you miss tech, you are in turn susceptible to jab resets and to immediate aerials or F smashes or whatever they're trying to hit you with immediately. But if we're strictly talking about execution testing tech chasers, then mistaking is usually your best option. Now, when we're considering the frame data of these tech options, it's important to realize that we have to subtract your reaction time and the input delay from the game in the equation to get a real answer of how difficult it actually is. And I won't claim to be an expert at this, but from everything I found researching for this, it seems that your reaction time can be trained but even if it couldn't be trained, the frame data ends up being generous enough that even the average reaction time of 250 milliseconds should be enough to get this in theory. It is lenient enough, it is actually closer to 280 to 300 milliseconds, depending on the exact setup. Uh, and most people, especially all of you degenerate gamers out there in your 20s, should be able to get that fairly easily. But there's still one variable we have to consider for this to be true, which is which frame you're reacting to in the animation. And this is why I always recommend people new to tech chasing to look at this Reddit thread, which I've linked in the description, because it has the animations for every tech option from all top seven characters. And from there, I learned which tells I'm looking for in every matchup. That's important, obviously, not every other matchup. I have no idea how to tech chase Donkey Kong, don't ask. However, out of the relevant characters, uh, Fox, for example, I always look at the leg position. It's pretty easy to di differentiate on like frame three. And for Marth, you can sometimes look at his cape, his hand, his legs, and his sword. The general shape changes pretty drastically. For Peach, she just like stands up in a part of her animations, just does a handstand. Uh, and it's pretty easy to tell which direction she's gonna roll in on, I think, frame four. Uh, I'm not looking at these at the moment, so you'll have to excuse me that I don't know them off the top of my head, but I have benefited greatly from it, and if you don't know what you're looking for, even with a inhumanly good reaction time, you're still not gonna be able to get it consistently. Also, quick footnote here. Uh, if you want to experience depression, look at Sheik's tech chase frame data. Because, holy shit, why is it impossible to tech chase this character? Why are her tech rolls so similar? 
which demon at Nintendo got lazy and decided that, nah, I'm not doing a second animation, we gotta push the game out, this is not gonna harm anyone. How could they not realize? It actually just makes me tilted. Uh, regardless, it's fine, character sucks, move on. The last thing I want to cover before moving on to the next topic are the other non-standard tech options, because outside of Sheik's untech chaseable ass, there's a few of them. For example, Pichu and Pikachu both have two frames of vulnerability on their tech in place, which is four frames less than every other character. This makes it incredibly hard to hit them with moves that have low active frames, that have a few active frames, like Shine or Grab. You'll just end up facing through them a lot of the time. There's also wildly different frame data on getup attacks. They all have the same total frames. However, the frame where their hitbox comes out and where their second hitbox comes out can vary wildly between characters. Uh, this is good to know because, for example, most characters can't like punish Marv's second hit of getup attack with anything meaningful except grab. Uh, and you will never be able to react to Ice Climber's getup attack or Donkey Kong's getup attack. And then there's one more, even more mysterious getup attack, which is Jigglypuff's. Jigglypuff's getup attack is the only one that's not invincible, but in exchange it is far stronger than the other ones. Which is a perfect segue into the next topic, which is crouching versus shielding the getup attack. The discussion, the debate. I think this is what most people associate tech chasing with, uh, largely because of how big of a discussion point it was, maybe like four or five years ago, I think, uh, roughly when I started getting good at the game. However, it's mostly died down into almost everyone deciding that crouch is better. Now, you can put two and two together and realize that if some getup attacks are unreactable, for example Donkey Kong and Ice Climbers, then obviously you can't shield them on reaction. Uh, so, even if you were to pick shield, you could only do so versus the relevant top tier characters, because thankfully all of them have slow enough getup attacks that they're reactable. But why would you want to do that? Well, because crouching comes with the devil's bargain, aka, is your controller good? If your controller is good, nice. If not, fuck, you cannot do it. That's a lie in that you can work around it, but for those who aren't aware, I switched the box because I went through like seven controllers that couldn't dash out of crouch. But why is dashing back out of crouch such a toxic input? Well, it's mainly because it's a one frame link, just like regular dash back was back in the day before we implemented UCF. Uh, this means that a lot of controllers will have a very hard time doing this because the stick position is read at varying rates depending on the pode. And this thankfully can be fixed with something like a Goom Wave or the FUB GCC, which is a uh, controller that uses a magnet rather than the stick boxes that we're used to. It's currently in development and open source, and one of the reasons I'm most excited for it is that hopefully players won't have to replace their controller because of bad pod, not being able to pivot, not being able to dash back out of crouch as frequently with magnets. Now, dashing back out of crouch is still doable on a bad controller, but it's annoying enough of an input that if you want to complain and say that your controller is fucking you over, I won't blame you. Uh, I'd still try and learn it, but it's definitely something that I've found very annoying, and it's something that I will never blame someone for missing specifically the dash break out of crouch. However, that should not be a reason to not learn the rest of it, because even if all you can manage is forcing your opponent to miss tech in order to get the dash back out of crouch out of you, execution testing you, that's fine. That means that you finally, you can just hit them. You don't have to go for the reaction tech chase anymore if you get them to mistake every single time. So you can condition them into doing something that's normally very bad in order to beat your specific weakness. Which means even in situations where your controller prevents you from doing true reaction tech chasing, it's still worth learning. In contrast, dashing forward out of crouch is a two frame input, meaning that it's basically consistent across all controllers. So we only really have to deal with a single option that's way harder, but it's still a big bummer that something that should be purely merit and practice is instead, you know, slightly dictated by your controller. Uh, probably the thing I despise most about Melee, if I can be completely honest. But I digress. The final thing we have to cover about crouching the getup attack is that it's percent dependent. For most characters it goes somewhere up to 90, 
Uh, it depends on your character's weight, and then of course you have to remember that Jigglypuff goes by different rules. But for everyone else, they deal the same damage, the same knockback, and you can crush them to the same percent. So I highly recommend memorizing your character's percent, and then you can know surely if you can crouch or if you can't. And that should change how you decide to play the situation. So that's obviously the main weakness for crouching, is that you can't do it uh, at every percent, and you also have to beat the execution test of dashing back out of crouch. However, in return, you no longer have to react to the getup attack. You can ignore it entirely because you'll automatically beat it, which means you're lowering the cognitive load that you have to deal with, making your reaction times better and more consistent. In contrast, shielding lets you do it at every percent, but you still have to react, and also, against some characters, you just straight up can't react. So there's a trade-off there, and I think almost everyone decided that taking the extra few percent from CCing the getup attack is worth it for a much more consistent tech chase overall. And I think that concludes the frame data part of the video, but there's one more thing I want to go into, which I think is probably the most valuable thing I can do for entirely new players or those on the fence, which is to set your expectations appropriately. So I think it's time to go into my own experience learning how to tech chase and teaching it to other players, because it's not always been a very pleasant experience. It's been frankly very frustrating at points and it's at times, especially early on, felt very unrewarding. So I think a lot of players could try this and go into it feeling very excited. And I want to start by giving you a time frame and a, like effort frame of how long it took me and kind of what struggles I had to deal with. And the first hurdle I encountered was of course not knowing anything of what I've told you in this video so far. Uh, so I'm expecting it to be a little bit easier for you to get into it now. Um, you can probably load up Uncle Punch, look at the animations in the Reddit thread, and pick Falcon, pick Sheik, pick Fox or something, tech chase an opponent for an hour, and you'll hit it at least a few times, and you'll slowly get better at it. I didn't really have that. For me, it felt completely impossible at the start. It took me a while to realize that I had to look at the animations and how important that was. So I just kind of bashed my head against the wall for at least a week. But it was only after I got through the initial barrier that things truly got annoying. Because what ends up happening is, you become consistent enough to hit it in practice fairly frequently, but not consistent enough to hit it versus other players, because you still haven't learned to position yourself automatically, and you still haven't gotten to the point where the reaction feels automatic, and it's not a decision you have to make actively. If you have to pick between reacting and guessing every time, and you're not sure, that extra lag, I felt, really made it hard for me, and it's something I've heard echoed in everyone I've taught it to since. In addition to this, you also end up tanking your results in the initial learning process of this, because you're not going to be as consistent as you are in guessing at the start, and you're going to miss, you're going to be frustrated, you're going to spend more mental energy on it than you would on guessing, and this will mean that your results become worse until they suddenly become way better. And I think this is pretty much unavoidable, it's just a part of the process. But that was definitely very frustrating for me. I think that honestly might have helped me when I was relearning the box, in that I was already prepared to go through a period of worse results and lower execution. So the fact that I truly got good at tech chasing after switching um, was probably very good for me because I was going through it and I was mentally prepared and it didn't really sneak up on me. But for everyone I've taught, there's definitely been a period where they've been like, is it really worth it? I, I keep, I can't react to tech in place. I can't react to get up attack. Like how do you use grab against tech in place? I can only shine it. I've heard that so many times and I really have no answer except practice. That, that's really just it. It's not impossible frame data wise. It's not even remotely close. But if you aren't willing to force yourself to do the harder reaction, you won't get it. If all you're doing is using shine or a frame one move, even when it's not very good, then you're not gonna learn to grab. You kinda have to allow yourself to fail before you're going to succeed. And then finally, you reach the position where I'm at, where anything above this I don't feel qualified to speak about. Obviously, I still think that like Wizrobe is better than me at tech chasing but I don't want to give their perspective because I don't have it. So all I can say here is that at the point I'm at, 
I think tech chasing is largely like riding a bicycle because you get used to the frame of reference that you have to be in and you get used to the mental state. You get used to the automatic moving to their landing position. However, you will have to cross-reference the animations every so often. Whenever you haven't played a Puff in a while, you haven't played a Peach in a while, you have to sit down and spend 10 minutes here and there to get back into the groove of things. But as long as you do that, the actual like hard part of getting used to it will just always be there for me. And then the final step in your journey is to realize that tech chasing is nerfed in high pressure situations. The longer a set goes on, the more stressful it is, the worse your tech chasing is going to be. Uh, this is not worth getting frustrated about. And I get incredibly annoyed at people who are, uh, because tech chasing is a tool that allows you to get a huge advantage over opponents who don't use it. And if they still take you to last stock, to last game, you just have to pull out another bag of tricks, or you have to get good enough that even with the stress, you still hit it. You have options, they have options. That doesn't mean it's bad. It allows you to skew the risk versus reward heavily in your favor for most of the set. And then at the very end, the final step is to recognize that you still need a backup plan. You still need ways to hit them hard, even if you cannot rely on perfect reactions. And once you have that, you'll be so much stronger in the punish game than those who don't even try to reaction tech chase. Even though maybe a lot of the time you will just go for reads that cover three out of four options or whatever like that. People have their own priorities. Point is, I get incredibly frustrated by players who say that it's not worth learning because even Wizrobe reads Mango uh, in game five. But the only reason Wizro gets Mango to game 5 is because he reaction tech chases him to death three games before that. Enough times that, you know, he keeps it closer. And yes, I realize that it's four games before a game 5. Don't fucking question it, okay? I meant to do that. Just like I meant to make this my segue out of the video. Yo, all planned. Woo! Nah, I'm memeing. Um... I've been meaning to make this video for a while, it's been rough, but I'm happy that it's finally out and I hope it's been helpful to you. Uh, if you want to show some support, you know, subscribe, uh, follow me on Twitch, I follow my Twitter where I just say bullshit all the time because I am terminally online and see me compete at various events and cheer for me or say that I am a filthy cheater for tech chasing, for playing on a digital controller or in general just hate me. You know, as long as you interact with me, that fuels the the stats, the important things. I don't know. I don't know how any of this works. I'm just assuming. I'm just a follower. I'm not a pioneer. And with that, I'm going to go follow my dreams of going to bed. Good night.